What's up everyone? Mike here, hanging out in the mushroom lab. Got some mushrooms here. Cool video for you guys today. Today I'm going to talk about uh, cloning mushrooms, basically how we can clone each one of these. So this is a king oyster mushroom and then this is a lion's mane mushroom. Let me just set those down a little bit and I just want to talk to you guys. So, um, but yeah, what basically what we're going to talk about today is cloning a mushroom. Now, why would you want to maybe clone a mushroom? Maybe if you've been out in the wild foraging and you've picked a mushroom and you want to put it into cultivation yourself, okay, maybe that's one reason maybe you'd want, to, you'd want to clone a mushroom. Or maybe you started growing mushrooms from spores and there's some genetics there that you would like to isolate, okay, and then maybe you would like to turn that into a culture and just put that into production because this is... Because it's just like taking a cutting off a plant, essentially, is like what we're doing here with these mushrooms. And we're just doing it here in a sterile environment. So I'm here in my lab, and I'm basically going to split open these mushrooms in front of the flow hood right here, okay? And we'll do this together, and I will we'll t I will take a sterile tissue sample out of the inside of that mushroom then, and then I will place it onto a petri dish, on a clean petri dish of agar. And then we will allow it to grow out. Typically, it takes about two weeks for the mushroom to colonize that agar plate and completely grow out. And what you need to do, too, during that time period is you need to be watching that mycelial growth. And you need to look and make sure you don't have any molds or bacteria growing along with that. And what I like to do, then, is on that first plate as it's growing out, it's, it's wise a lot of times after you have some clean growth coming out to take a section of that clean growth and then you can transfer that onto a new petri dish and then that'll start blasting off, that mycelium will start blasting off fresh and it will completely coat that new petri dish and then you will have cloned the mushroom, okay? Um, but what we're basically doing, we're just trying to get a clean tissue sample out of the inside of that mushroom, place it onto the petri dish, further isolate it until we have a completely clean sample. All right, are you guys ready? Let's get it. Okay, so the first thing I'm basically doing here is I'm just flame sterilizing my scalpel. We're just making sure we got a nice, clean, sterile scalpel to work with so we can get a tissue sample out of the inside of that mushroom. So scalpel sterile, and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna alcohol up my hands. So right here, I got the alcohol spray bottle out. I'm just gonna spray a little bit into my palm, and then I'm gonna rub it in between my hands here. And what you want to do here, it, when you're trying to take this tissue sample, you just want to be as clean as you possibly can. As I split this mushroom open, I'm splitting it open in front of the flow hood here. I'm wanting to show you guys on the camera, so I'm kind of leaning a little this way. But really, you just want to make sure you're working in front of the flow hood as much as you can. If you don't have a flow hood, you could always do this inside a still air box. And you should always alcohol your hands up in between transfers, or if you think you got yourself dirty a little bit or something like that. It's always wise just to re-sanitize again if you have to. So now I've just taken that first tissue sample of the inside of there, and I'm kind of just pushing it into the agar right there. You kind of learn a technique after a little while, and I actually try to kind of tuck the tissue into there just to get it to stick in there a little bit. And now I'm actually taking multiple samples here. It's always wise if you're trying to clone a wild mushroom especially, just to take multiple tissue samples just in case you do get a significant amount of contamination on one for whatever reason. And that way you're more likely to get a successful clone out of there and you'll be able to isolate it one way or another. So I always like to take multiple transfers when I'm doing a clone. And after you've gotten all your clones taken, then you want to go ahead and you just want to seal your petri dish up. And I actually like to use electrical tape. You can use parafilm too, whatever you choose. But I'm kind of a fan of using electrical tape. So you can see I've got that plate all sealed up right now. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm gonna snip it with that scissors. And I'm going to go ahead and smooth over the rest of that electrical tape. And bam, there we go. Nice pretty clone we just took. So now, on to the king oyster. Okay, so first what I tried to do is I tried to break open the stem. And actually that wasn't the smartest thing. On these king oysters, you should actually break open kind of by the top there. Up on the top of the cap. And any wild mushroom, if you ever... Uh, pick a wild mushroom you're out foraging and you want to clone one in the lab you're just going to have to kind of experiment with it and see the best way to kind of dissect it and take it apart where you can actually get a clean tissue sample some of them you can get a nice sample up by the the top there others others do best by the base okay and uh, I, I had good luck there though tearing that cap and then I just took that first tissue sample there placed it on the agar and now I'm going to go in for my second sample here in just a little bit. I'm going to set my new petri dish in the, in its spot there. 
one thing when you're working in the lab, you'll kind of learn a workflow technique that you kind of like yourself. And it's going to kind of depend on your workspace and everything around you and all that stuff. But you'll definitely develop your own technique and kind of figure how you like to do your sterile clean work. But for myself, whenever I'm taking clones, like I said, I always like to take multiple transfers just to make sure we can get a nice clean uh, tissue sample out of there one way or another. And uh, there we go. Just got that last one there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tuck it in the agar. Everything went really well with that. I got some nice clean samples to show you guys. Putting the lid on there. And now we're going to start sealing them up with the electrical tape once again. And like I said, it takes about two weeks for that mycelium to fully grow out. And you should be watching it the whole time for any molds, bacterias, or yeasts that might be hitchhiking along. That, and you may need to isolate off uh, some clean mycelium. But there it is. All right, everyone, so that was it. The basics of cloning a mushroom, right? So it's pretty simple, really. So all you're doing is you're taking a little tissue sample, basically like a cutting from the inside of that mushroom, like the core of that mushroom, and then you're just placing it onto the Petri dish. And you're taking it from the inside just because that's never been exposed to um, at the atmosphere, you know what I mean? No mold spores or bacterial spores. It's been growing on the inside of the core of that mushroom and then we're just breaking it open here in front of that, in front of the flow hood or in your still air box where it's clean. And then you're just gonna take a sample out of the inside of that, place it onto your Petri dish, and then you will allow that to kind of grow out. And then, like I said, the next step is over the next week or two, you need to be watching the growth of that mycelium and you need to be making sure you don't have any like bacterias or molds or yeasts or anything like that trying to attack your mycelium and invade your petri plate, all right? So um, my suggestion is if you're cloning a wild mushroom or if you're just trying to isolate some genetics, trick, put it on that plate, on that initial plate, take your initial clone, and then see that mycelium grow off a little bit. Do what's called a transfer, where you section off a piece of that clean, healthy mycelium, and then transfer that to a brand new petri dish to allow it to really grow out again. And then you'll get a nice, um, clean mycelial growth and then you can go ahead and you can put it into an LC or keep it into, put it into a slam, put it into storage, you know, whatever you like. But that is essentially how you clone a mushroom start to finish. So if you guys have any questions for me, just drop down below in that comment section and I'll be sure to address it. Uh, you can use potato dextrose or malt extract agar. Either one works great for cloning a mushroom. And I will link recipes to make your own potato dextrose and malt extract agar down in the description box below. So hopefully you all found this helpful and, and informative. And if you did, please drop this video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one, and I'll catch you on the next one.